This episode was brought to you by the Candle of Tomorrow, the Magic Candle Company. You don't even have to light it. Visit themagiccandlecompany.com and use offer code offhand to get 15% off of your purchase. I'll see you all later on in this timeline. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our McDonnell Douglas Spaceport Mission Control. While we're waiting for clearance to board Flight 92, I'll try to get our operations director to explain what's going on. Oh, Mr. Morrow? Yes? Mr. Morrow, could you spare a few minutes to explain mission control to our passengers? Of course, glad to. Welcome aboard, space travelers. Thank you, Mr. Morrow, Mr. Tom Morrow. Please contact Mr. Johnson in the control tower to confirm your flight to the moon. Oh, don't worry, thanks to interventions, Having unexpected company is a snap, but getting them to leave is still a nightmare. We're still working on that. <laughs> yes, sir, we've got all the latest things. And I'm not talking Mr. Coffee, whose work I admire, by the way. I'm talking smart relatives of mine, genius gadgets that take the hard work out of housework. You want digital, analog, interactive, hyperactive, radioactive. Can you believe it? It's all here. You're going to love it. Ever wonder how Disney dreams become reality? It's something called Imagineering. Where's the best place to sit on a Disney ride? The best place to sit? Well, Bridget, sit back and hold on. Listen, here's the scoop. There are three rules of riding. The front seat isn't always the best seat. Sure, the front's the first to go over, but when the back goes over, it really goes on! What started as a simple curious question has since turned into a story of transcendence. A story of becoming more than oneself, shedding their flesh to become something greater. Of course, through the power of futuristic science and technology. The question dawned on me as I was aboard one of my favorite attractions at all of Walt Disney World in Orlando, the Tomorrowland People Mover. You see, Tomorrowland at Walt Disney World is presented as sort of a city of the future. Meanwhile, at Disneyland, it's just sort of a land where they put everything that's Star Wars related and vaguely futuristic. Sorry, off topic. And the People Mover serves as the citizens of Tomorrowland's way to get around. They can go from their vacation or maybe their jobs at Starport 75 over to the Tomorrowland Light and Power Company to, I don't know, pay the utility bill? What is it they do there? I guess it's the launch depot now, so that means that all the utility bills are paid for by the government? Truly, a city of tomorrow. And it is while we are aboard this transportation system of the future that we hear someone being paged by Mr. Johnson in a control tower. That person, of course, being Mr. Morrow. Mr. Tom Morrow. And it raised a sort of question in my head. Besides being one of the best Walt Disney World vloggers, seriously, check out Paging Mr. Morrow. That man is, he's a treasure. What is the identity of the real, the Disney Parks character, Mr. Morrow? And to understand the answer to that question, we are going to need to go back. All the way back. Not to the beginning of Disney World, but to the beginning of Disneyland in Anaheim. Back when Walt was still around. To opening day, July 17th, 1955, to Tomorrowland 1.0. Now, when Disneyland opened on the 17th of July, all the other lands sort of had their, what we would call today, at least, e-tickets. Adventureland had the Jungle Cruise. Fantasyland, of course, had the dark rides. I guess Peter Pan's flight would be the closest. Frontierland had the pack mules and the stagecoach, and Tomorrowland had uh, the Autopia? That's kind of an e-ticket? I mean, sure, if you were interested in aluminum and clocks, Tomorrowland would be the place to be. But they didn't have that big headliner futuristic attraction, at least they wouldn't, until a little less than a week after the park opened, five days when Rocket to the Moon, the first sort of simulator style attraction at Disneyland, open to the public. Now, for those of you who don't remember this attraction, you sat in a circular theater with a screen on the floor and the ceiling. Think Stitch's Great Escape. That was the same sort of layout. Or I guess the better comparison would be the space elevator portion of Space 220, with a screen on the floor and ceiling showing you rising from Epcot to the whatever space station, uh, Centauri space station, I believe it's called. That's Centauri, not Brava Centauri. Okay, that's Horizons. 
The weenie for Tomorrowland, leading you back to Flight to the Moon, would be the TWA Moonliner, still there today, just disguised as a Pizza Planet rocket. And the man guiding you through and talking you through your trip to the moon was none other than a scientist named Tom Morrow, a human man who is the operations manager of the McDonnell Douglas Spaceport, the location where your Moonliner would launch for your trip to the moon. This man is the first recorded instance of Tom Morrow at the Disney parks, but interestingly, this is the only time he is portrayed as a human being, flesh and blood. And actually, recently you could meet him at Throwback Night. Last week I was there, it was a great time. In front of his blackboard with his old retro style outfit on, he would teach you about the moon, I guess. I don't know, I wasn't gonna wait in that line, but he seemed nice. So we'll add this Tom Morrow to the very first slot on the timeline. He is the missions director for the flight to the moon. And I suppose just for the sake of being thorough, we'll put this picture of Tom Morrow in the timeline as well, just underneath the other one, because these are technically the same incarnation. You can just talk to this one, he's outside. When the 70s rolled around and Rocket to the Moon, then known as Flight to the Moon, was outdated as per the Tomorrowland problem, tomorrow always comes, and the moon was now an attainable goal, so it wasn't really futuristic. So instead, Flight to the Moon became Mission to Mars. And in addition to a brand new destination, that being... Mars, there was a new mission commander. Instead of Tom Morrow, it was now Mr. Johnson. Now, if you remember that name, we'll circle back to that in a second. And it should be noted that these are separate characters, although they look similar, they're wearing a different shirt. See, see, his is red. That's the difference. So Tom Morrow was out at Disneyland, but you say to yourself, he was present though at Walt Disney World on the People Mover. No, funny thing, the audio back in those days has no mention of Tom Morrow or Mr. Johnson in the control tower. See, I told you we'd circle back. I'll put a card to Epidon's video right there in the top right corner so you don't have to listen to the whole audio here in the video, but there is no mention of Tom Morrow in the original 1975 People Mover audio. That's right, the, the People Mover opened in 75, not 71. It did not open with the rest of the park. How sad. Tom would reappear in 1971 at Walt Disney World's version of Flight to the Moon, but when it was redone as Mission to Mars, also Mr. Johnson took his place. Eventually, Mission to Mars closed at the Magic Kingdom and made way for the extraterrestrial alien encounter, and during development, the robot host that we knew back then as Sir was going to be named Tom 2000 as a reference to Tom Morrow, but that obviously didn't end up happening, and we wouldn't see Tom resurface until 1998. This time though, back at his original home in Tomorrowland at Disneyland, but instead of at what is now Alien Pizza Planet, you would find him at Innoventions. But there was one thing that was different about Tom this time. Tom wasn't a man, at least not a human one. Tom now was a robot with masculine programming. Tom Morrow had at long last shed his pitiful flesh and become something more through the power of Innoventions. <laughs> Now you may recognize that voice, it's actually Nathan Lane, known for providing the voice of Timon from The Lion King. And while not exactly the same, the animatronic was extremely similar to the timekeeper found at the attraction of the same name at the Magic Kingdom, originally found at Disneyland Paris. It was located today where the Monsters Inc. Laugh Floor is currently right across the street from Tom Morrow's old home, which raises the question, does this robot in any way have any sort of relation to Tom Morrow, the one that we knew before. Is it the same person? L let me explain. Okay, here we get into theory territory. The technology in Tomorrowland all over the world, any Tomorrowland, just pick it, is far more advanced than what we have access to today. It includes space travel, time travel, and of course, disappointment. And in the case of Walt Disney World, alien technology. So it may be possible that in Tomorrowland, at some point, it became possible to transfer one's consciousness from their body to an artificial robot body. That's, that's option number one. This is the same Tom Morrow from Flight to the Moon, just transcended. 
Option two, which I don't know, depending on where we go later on in this video, may be more plausible. This robot was invented by Tom Morrow and made in his own image, you know, as, as you do, and named after his original creator. Although that theory does hit a few snags, we'll talk about those in a minute. Going with option A, Tom Morrow was a rocket scientist for Flight to the Moon before he perfected moon travel, and Mr. Johnson eventually came in to take his previous job, now going to Mars. Tom Morrow, of course, would have to be demoted, which is why you can find inquiries to apply with him at the Main Street Cinema by the Disneyland casting agency door. This is still while he's in his human form. So while he may have a lesser job now, he still is a resident of Tomorrowland and has access to the most cutting edge technology. And so he begins to travel the galaxy with Star Tours. That's right, Tom Morrow was referenced in the queue for the original Star Tours before the Adventures Continue came in. There is also a character in the Adventures Continue named Mott Warom, but this is just Tom Morrow spelled backwards. I'm assuming the name of an alien. Uh, as far as I know, this is a separate, completely different character. Meanwhile, back at Walt Disney World, in the queue for extraterrestrial alien encounter, a screen said that a Professor Tom Morrow would be hosting a lecture called Mission to Mars, History or Hoax. So now in the timeline, somewhere between his demotion at the Mission to Mars headquarters and his becoming a robot, he is now a disgruntled professor trying to discredit his replacement, Mr. Johnson, trying to frame the entirety of the Mission to Mars attraction as a hoax. As you can see, he's beginning to lose some of that sanity, some of that level-headedness that we saw him with back when he was the commander for Flight to the Moon. Sort of bridging the gap between his more level-headed scientific self from that attraction at Disneyland to the newer, more wacky, wild, Nathan Lane interpretation at Innoventions. Now we move over to the Skipper Canteen. Yes, the SEA comes into this at some point. This is the best video ever. The People Mover, we got the SEA. This is like the best offhand Disney video ever. We just need some Haunted Mansion in here and then it'd be perfect. In the library, we can find two books written by Tom Morrow. One entitled Mission to the Stars, which I'm assuming he wrote, yes, while he was flight commander back in the early days, and another called Mission to the Red Planet, which I can only assume he wrote after leaving Flight to the Moon. But the thing that's interesting here is that Skipper Canteen takes place, the storyline for Skipper Canteen takes place in 1938, hence tying back to the whole time travel thing. Apparently Tom Morrow's crazy conspiracy about the mission to Mars being faked got him demoted or even fired even further because he shows up again at Tomorrowland at Stitch's supersonic celebration as a weatherman. Tom, having now gone from a prestigious rocket scientist to a weatherman for a futuristic city that I'm assuming doesn't really need weathermen anymore, had hit rock bottom. He has nowhere else to turn, but he does have one thing, his smarts, okay? While his ethics, while his personality may be twisted, may be a bit more crazy than it was when he was commander of Flight to the Moon, he still had his intellect. And he had one person, one friend, who could help him. The one who was able to send him back to 1938 to Skipper Canteen, to the turn of the century, Main Street USA at Disneyland. The one Disney animatronic that has access to time travel, the timekeeper. I'm not making this up, I, I mean, I kind of am. While we may travel back in time on Spaceship Earth, there is no animatronic there that is really controlling our journey. Meanwhile, on the timekeeper, we do travel back in time with the help of this Robin Williams voiced animatronic. Mr. Morrow begs the timekeeper for his help. He tells him of all the grand ideas he has, of all of these different interventions that he could make possible if he only had the time. Sure, he could travel back to the beginning of time or to the end of the universe, but his body was still aging. He needed something better. And the timekeeper was able to provide it in the form of a leftover robot shell, maybe not in use by the timekeeper, maybe a past or future version of the timekeeper, but either way, with the help of the timekeeper, Tom Morrow was able to transfer maybe his brain, maybe just his consciousness, into a new robotic body, which is who we see at Interventions. But this, apparently, 
wasn't enough. Because there is also a Tom Morrow 2.0 who was featured at Epcot's Innoventions. That's right, Tom Morrow had more evolving to do. Now, he had mastered Innoventions, he had mastered time travel, and he had unlimited time. He didn't die. Tom Morrow was now essentially an immortal being. He could do whatever he wanted. And what did he do? He uh, answered questions on a, on a television show. Omni mover rides, you don't have to worry. These were designed to give everyone the best seat in the house. Or in this case, the mansion. <laughs> yeah, he, he yelled a lot in his 2.0 form. I guess his brain just couldn't handle his new mechanical body. So going back to the timeline, 1955, we find the original Tom Morrow as the flight commander for the flight to the moon. He is replaced by Mr. Johnson, and as we enter the 2000s, he has slowly lost his sanity and become more of a mad scientist before transferring his body into a new robotic shell with the help of the timekeeper, Tom Morrow from Interventions. And it is worth mentioning that with his new robotic body, he does go through a bunch of different professions, like he becomes the mayor of Tomorrowland, maybe they're just more respecting of robots there, I don't know. Before eventually ditching his 1.0 body, I, or would it be his 2.0 body, his original robot body at Disneyland's Interventions, going to Epcot's Interventions, and getting a brand new 2.0 body there. 3.0? A brand new body there. I, who cares? Trick question. I do. That's Tom Morrow 0.0, that's 1.0, and that's 2.0. Easy. Now, unfortunately, it's about here where our records of Mr. Morrow get a little bit fuzzy. We do find some scrapped remnants of his original robot body 1.0 in the collector's office at Mission Breakout over in California Adventure, but that's about all. Perhaps Tom Morrow is still out there somewhere, maybe roaming Epcot in that tiny little car of his, seeking to answer questions. Maybe his journey has taken him back to the stars. Maybe he's out there time traveling somewhere in history, or... Perhaps, maybe, he has become so enlightened, so smart, that he has not only transcended his human body, but also his robotic bodies. Maybe Tom Morrow is the very air we breathe, the energy we feel while we're in Tomorrowland. Becoming more than just a Q&A robot, a flight commander. Now, something more. A force of nature. God help us. Or, I, I guess, Tom help us. They've become one and the same now. The very air we breathe. Why not make sure the air you breathe smells good? Segway. This video, of course, was brought to you by the Magic Candle Company. It's the last video of the month, after all. If you want your home or office to smell just like Tom Morrow himself, may I suggest Space Coaster, or if you want to make your home or office smell like the fall of ancient Western civilization, let your olfactory system become a time traveler just like Tom Morrow and try out the Rome burning scent. There are so many different scents to pick from, and if you don't want a candle, they have room sprays, hand sanitizer, and even bath products. Tom Morrow is an energy field created by all living things. It surrounds us and penetrates us, binds the galaxy together. Why not become one with the universe and help out the offhand Disney channel a little bit by going to the link in the description to the magiccandlecompany.com and using offer code OFFHAND at checkout to save 15% off of your entire order. And if you don't want your room to smell like the future, one, why, but two, you could also purchase the Haunted and the Pirate's Life candle, put them together, light them at the same time, and make the hidden, secret, offhand Disney exclusive Lafitte scent. That's a little secret from me to you. Well, that, now that just smells exactly like la feet. Remember, that's offer code OFFHAND at checkout for 15% off of your order. Link in the description. And a thank you to the Magic Candle Company for being a very long time continuous sponsor of this channel. You rock. All of you. So whether he's in robot form, galaxy form, or human form, Tom Morrow continues to intrigue and honestly kind of confuse Disney Parks fans around the world. And I wouldn't have it any other way. And something tells me he wouldn't either. And here's hoping that maybe one day, someday soon even, we'll see a new Tomorrowland at Disneyland featuring a Tom Morrow 3.0 upgraded for the modern age. Either that or, or a reopened people mover. One of the two, I'll accept either. Honestly, probably the people mover.
Hey everybody, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. The names that you can see scrolling right about now on the left hand side of your screen are the Patreon supporters from patreon.com slash offhand Disney. They are the ones actually who help keep this channel going, keep me chugging along, going to the parks, creating videos for you. If you enjoyed my content and you want to join their ranks, get early access to some videos like they got a sneak preview of this one earlier this week, head over to the link in the description. And like I said, even just $1 a month will get you access and I truly truly appreciate each and every single one of you and that's right all of you if that doesn't interest you and you'd rather have a little free alternative just hit the subscribe button if you're new around here the like button also goes a very very long way yeah it lets YouTube know that you liked my videos and if you did like it like it right is that that's what I'm supposed to do I can also do this. Be sure to follow me on my other social medias at Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. I am Offhand Disney on all of those platforms to make it easy, to make it more simple. Just search Offhand Disney, you'll find me, I'll pop up, and then we can get more great Offhand Disney content, especially on, on, on a TikTok. I'm trying to up my game there. And I think that's all of the plugs that I have to do. Thank you all so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Will it be a throwback night video? I don't I'll leave that up to me to decide. Actually, I'm still working on that throwback night video. Thank you all. Goodbye. Well, lots of patrons this month. Thank you all. Wow, so much.